Hi, welcome back to Off the Shelf Book Talk with Book Lovers. I'm Elizabeth Nelson here with Kay Johnson, and we're going to talk about some new books this week, and maybe some spooky books for, <laughs> for Halloween. What have you been reading, Kay? Or do you want to talk about your favorite spooky books first? Oh, I think we need to jump right into spooks <laughs> and ghosts. Yes. Well, my all-time favorite scary book is uh, Salem's Lot by Stephen mm -hmm. King. And for those who may not have had the joy of reading it, it is about vampires. <laughs> and there's also a TV, sh or a TV movie mm -hmm. starring David Soule. There's actually two versions, one with Rob Lowe and one with David Soule. Mm -hmm. Skip Rob Lowe and go with David Soule. Or just skip them both and go to the book. <laughs> oh, it's, it's so, the movie is so scary. I mean, to mm -hmm. this day, I will not watch that movie again. I will never forget because there's all these scenes, because it's just your normal, and I do normal in quotes, main town like Stephen King likes to write about. Mm -hmm. And this two men move to town, Barlow and uh, I forget the other guy's name. I should remember this. And they take over the Marston house where there'd been a murder. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, David Soule comes to town, he's a reporter, and he wants to rent the Marston house too. And these guys beat him to it. And then all of a sudden, of course, people start disappearing. And as, as they do. Yes. Yeah. But the word, <laughs> the, there's two scenes that are really bad in this movie. And one is, is um, Mike Ryerson, mm -hmm. who was a student of one of the people that David Soule's hanging mm -hmm. out with. And uh, he gets bitten, of course, becomes a vampire, and then goes to visit his teacher, and you hear the rocking chair, and he says, you'll sleep like the dead. It is just so incredibly Aww. creepy. Oh, and then there's another scene where they've got Mrs. Glick stretched out on the doctor's table with a sheet over her, and they're going to well, see if she actually will rise like a vampire. And the sheet starts to shake. And they make crosses out of tongue depressors. And he starts reciting the, the 21st Psalm. Yeah. Scary. Well, there were there's lots of stuff like in the book, too, that's scary. I remember it's like they're trying to go down to a basement. Oh, yes. And they've um, cut the steps off. Yes. And made a really nasty booby trap down there. Yes. And then there yeah. there's a school bus of children. I remember the school bus. I remember the school bus. But yeah. I... Um, I think pretty much anything by Stephen King is going to be it, creepy. It is just it, super creepy. Yep. The, the Shining. The Shining. Yeah. I, well, I think it's interesting because you have most people when they think of The Shining, they think of the movie. Yes. Um, which the Stanley Kubrick and Jack Nicholson and all that, which the movie is actually very different from that book. The book is much better, I think. Yeah. Well, I, that's all we've, we've talked about this many times. It's always the case. The books yeah. are always better. <laughs> that movie, though, is, I mean, first of all, I'm sort of a borderline Jack Nicholson fan. He's just a little bit on the rim for me. <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. that movie, he's really off the rim. Like, yeah. And. Well, I always thought it was, there was a documentary on the making of that. And the little boy had no idea he was making a horror movie. Thank God. Otherwise, he'd be like, <laughs> yeah, like With a little scarred. Yeah, yeah scarred but, for life. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, The Shining's, and then his son, um, what is his Jonah Hill now? Is right, Jonah Hill. Yeah, Jonah. no, it's Hill. Hill, but not Jonah Hill. Stuff. Jonah Hill's an actor. Yes. <laughs> I'll look it up quick. You keep yes. talking, Betsy. Um, well, I did read a new um, scary book, Getting Ready for Today. Um, last time I talked about it, I'd won a copy of The Haunting of Lee Harker by Darcy Coates, and I finished it. And Joe I, Hill. Joe Hill. We were close. It was a J name. <laughs> um, he's written, um, it was made into a TV show that NSN042, it's like a license plate number for a book. He's followed his dad's footsteps in writing lots of scary books. <laughs> but um, I read The Haunting of Lee Harker and I talked about that I'd gotten this book on the last episode and I read it now and I finished it and Darcy Coates who's the author usually always writes horror books um, and this one's actually more it's got the horror aspects to it but this is more of a murder mystery oh okay so I, a little different little her. different um, 
I liked it because there were quite a few different twists, um, things you didn't expect, and even the very ending didn't make any sense. Like I, I didn't see it coming. It made perfect sense once it all kind of came together, but it was just a lot different than what she's normally written and more um, with enough of the scary horror scenes that she's known for, but more of a murdery, murder mystery type deal to it, which is really nice. Um, for a change, and the characters were really cool. It just is. I enjoyed it a lot. That's yeah. good. Well, you know, when you talk about scary books, the movie of the haunting of Hill House is mm -hmm. pretty scary. Yes. The book is is by um, Shirley Jackson. Shirley Jackson. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you, and Shirley Jackson yeah. always had sort of a weird twist to her book. <laughs> But the thing with The Haunting of Hill House that is interesting is you never, ever see yeah. the cre whatever haunts Hill yeah. House. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was the thing with the, um, we read the, I remember reading the book in high school for a class and I'd read it, I'd already read it before reading it in high school because I was that kid in high school who'd already read all the books that everybody else was reading. <laughs> and I had my own copies of most of them that I brought to class too, because... I'm a nerd. I'm a special kind of nerd. A book um, nerd. But um, in the books, you never, it alludes to all these scary things happening and they never actually describe what, you're, what they're seeing. Like I remember a scene in the book where it's, she's outside and she's, they mention she sees a couple having a picnic and then something's wrong with it, but it never tells you what she saw that was wrong. But you just, it's enough to creep you out. Yeah, the book's mm -hmm. creepy and the movie's mm -hmm. really yeah. creepy. They did a remake, mm -hmm. Bad. Skip the remake of The Haunting of Hill House. You want to see the, the like, 1960s mm -hmm. version, black and white. Yeah. Well, they, she also um, wrote, she's the one that wrote that we've always lived in the castle, right? I think so. That's the one where um, it's a, it's a sis, two sisters, and I think their uh, uncle live in this house, and, like, the sister had been convicted of murdering the family, and so nobody comes up to the house anymore. <laughs> well, I understand. Or, had they, or like the family was killed for dinner and they thought it was the one sister that did it, but they couldn't prove it. So they, they're staying up in this house and then a long lost relative comes and throws off the dynamic in the house and things hit the fan as they always do when you throw any kind of long lost relative <laughs> into, the <mix. laughs> into the mix. Um, I also read um, jo Josh Mallerman. He wrote The Bird Box, which that was big on Netflix. Um, he wrote a book called A House at the Bottom of a Lake. And this, I read, I picked this one up because I was looking for something kind of spooky to read for talking about this episode. And the book, um, this follows two uh, kids. Let me double check their names here. James and Amelia. And they are going on a first date and they decide to go canoeing. And so they're out on this lake going around and they go through... Um, a small little tunnel because they see that there's another part of the lake that people haven't been to and when they go through they look down into the water and there is a full two-story house just under the surface of the water and um, so it follows kind of their summer romance and them kind of deciding to explore the house and when they get into the house things aren't quite normal like there are plates on the table and there are lighting cords that hang down and just things aren't quite right with the house <laughs> so but that was and I thought it was and it had a lot of jump stuff at the end and things you didn't expect and good yeah it was good um I think I it kind of I think it's more of a short story than an actual like full book or like a novella it's really I mean I read it in an afternoon minutes. no not 15 <laughs> minutes maybe a couple hours <laughs> Had to keep putting it down and go deal with kids, you know. You can't just sit and read when your children need you, unfortunately. <laughs> Sometimes. That's true. But um, he's got a really interesting way of writing, too, kind of that style of, um, well, with the bird box, because um, that's the one where everybody has to cover their eyes when they go outside because oh, something yes, has yes. taken, something has either taken over the world or is showing, and if people look at it, they have to kill themselves. Um, Sandra Bullock. Yes, there was, she was in the Netflix show. So, um, and that's the same kind of thing where, you know, the bird box, the book follows the main character and her two kids as they're trying to get from the house where they've been 
to a place of safety where you can't see where you're going because you can't take off your eyewear. You can't uncover your eyes because it could kill you. <laughs> but that's another really good Halloween read, too. And there's actually a sequel out to it now that came out, I think, last year. Good. Uh, I have not read it yet. Okay. Well, I'm into sci-fi at the moment. Yes. Adventure. You're always into sci-fi, Kay, let's be honest. <laughs> Well, I really like zombies, but yes. I, I kind of stepped away from zombies, and now I'm into things like the blood of Bigfoot. Oh, my God. Megalodon, Thresher, <laughs> Terror from the Cravat, <coughs> by Michael Cole, no less. Yeah. These are great books, and I, I just love them because they're, they're just pure escapism. Mm -hmm. And to a certain degree, they're scary. I yeah. mean, because, you know, it's always some fool on a boat who gets like eaten by a megalodon <laughs> and and a megalodon is the prehistoric forerunner of the great white shark mm. it is much bigger and much more aggressive yes and of course as, usually as these, one is yes. yeah, and usually these animals or these fish are um genetically engineered but for military mm -hmm. projects and then they always escape and then mm -hmm. all hell breaks loose. Mm -hmm. And so then there's the, the sheriff and the scientist yes. and, and usually some woman from somewhere. That's She's usually a reporter. Or yeah, like a, yes, a reporter. <laughs> or something. Yeah, who, who is out to, uh, um, there's some who want to save the animal because mm -hmm. it's worth money to sell to like terrorists. Mm -hmm. And then there's others who want to blow that sucker up yes. because he's a bad thing to yeah. have. So I, I have not read The Blood of Bigfoot yet, though. Okay. So I cannot speak out to you that one. can't speak. Okay. Well, you'll have to report on that next well, episode. Well, the only thing or... I can tell you is I did start it. Mm -hmm. And it begins with this, this creature waking up. <laughs> and then he eats some campers because <laughs> he'd been hibernating. I do think zombies are... See, this are is why it's just always good to, like... You read all these books or you see these movies where people go out into the woods and they stay. And it's just like, this is why it's good to just stay in your house, read a book. And lock the door. Watch TV and don't go outside. Yeah, because, see, I'm big on that too. I mean, all these people, it's like they go camping, they get eaten. Yes. No <laughs> doubt about it. You did not catch me going camping in the dark woods. Because I know what lurks behind those trees. Oh. And it's not pretty. It could be the blood of Bigfoot. Oh, gosh. These are really great, though. I mean, yeah. I highly recommend them. I always thought it would be fun to have the job where you come up with those different titles. Oh, yeah. Like, even, like, ones. like, the cozy mystery ones where they're all, they, like, rhyme or there's... Mango, mayhem, and murder. Yeah. <laughs> I almost bought that one yeah. the other day. There was, um, I can't remember what it was, but they were all Sherlock Holmes-inspired. Oh, names. those are cool. Yeah, I can't remember what they were, but... Um, those were good. I'm trying to think if there's anything else recently that I've read that would be like kind of scary. Well, I mean, like we talked about The Giver last time, and that's more of a dystopian world that's always kind of. Um, another, Riley Sager is always good. I've talked about his books, um, Home Before Dark. Always. Home, home Before Dark. Home Before Dark. Um, Lock Every Door. The of fin course. The Final Girls. Um but I mean, like home after home before dark is the one where um, it kind of comes back to like a house on haunted hill, or actually that would be more of like an Amityville horror where something happened and the family had to escape in the middle of the night, left everything behind, and then um, the dad wrote a book about it, and they never talked about it again after they left, and then the daughter years later after the father dies inherits the house, which she discovers the dad had never sold. And so then she goes back to the house and is trying to decide um, what was real and what her dad made up. And then... Um, is it good? It is really good. And actually, um, the twist at the end, it plays into what... It kind of plays into what did he do that wasn't... What did he make up? What does she remember? And what actually happened um, that her young mind had to warp things to deal Ooh, with interesting. um but yeah no it was that was really good and i like i like the format um some of the books it gets to be a little much where it goes back and forth so you have like when everything was happening and then the people in the present trying to figure it out i kind of i enjoy those unless 
you jump around and you're like, okay, wait, now where am I in right. time? <laughs> the other thing authors are doing too is they start with the prologue. Mm -hmm. That's very big now. You yes. get it in almost mm -hmm. every book. Yeah, I started um, the, it's called The Maidens. It's by um, Alexander Michaelin, Mike. Michael Lids, he wrote The Silent Patient. Oh, oh That was okay. so big. It's is this his, his new one? This is his new one that came out. So this one, and that one starts, so the very first line of the prologue is, Edward Fosco was a murderer. That's how the prologue starts. And so the, the premise of this book, and I'm only like a third of the way through it right now, um, the main character, M Mariana, is a psychotherapist, and she does group therapy, and her... Niece calls her because her best friend has been murdered at uh, Cambridge University. And okay. so she goes up to try to help out and instantly can tell something is off with this guy and there's more to it than just a simple, a, a simple murder. But um, there's no such thing as a simple murder, but like it's just like it's, it's more than what the police are putting it into. And so I've just gotten to the part now where she's trying to solve it herself. And I think it's going to... It's going to be an interesting twist because she has some personal demons that she's had to deal with. Oh. And so I think some of that's going to come to play in with her dealing with this other guy. So, oh, okay. But I'm interested to see how it turns out. And I, I do like his writing because the book, they move. Okay. Like he's covering a lot of information and you're learning a lot of backstory about her. But it's still like the chapters are like two, three pages. And you're, so you're learning a lot in a short amount of time, but it's still trucking along. And I like his books, too, because they're books that you can get drawn into and you can sit down and actually, like, want to finish them. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you and you're Well, there are some books where you're like, I want to know what happens, but I'm going to have to read, like, 20, page, 20 pages to find, have them go, like, two blocks. <laughs> yeah, I really do. I think that's one of the significant differences between a well-done book mm -hmm. and a so-so book is that, that forward mo motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you, one who was really great at it was um, he wrote the Eagle is Landed, um, Jack um, Clancy, who ja John Clancy? No, no, it's like that though okay. he does, but he was before. Okay, and I'll look it up. Yeah. but his books move so fast mm -hmm. and they're so great because you you never get bogged down and you never mm -hmm. get bored. Yeah. As you're moving the whole time, which I think is mm -hmm. good. Well, and that's what I liked about uh, when it comes to like Dan Brown, where you come to the oh yeah 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 um, like Angels and Demons and the Da Vinci Code. Yeah. I always, when I look at those two books, I've always personally liked Angels and Demons better with Me too. everything. Um, and that's where they're trying to save the the Pope. It takes place in the Vatican in Rome. And I liked that one because they're on a time limit. You know, they have an hour to try to get to the right. next location before somebody yes. else is killed. Whereas the Da Vinci Code kind of, you go this way for a little bit and then you come over here and talk about a painting yes. for a while. And then we're back over here doing this. Yeah, and Angels <laughs> and Demons is better. Yeah. I, I mm -hmm. always thought that. But see, and then a lot of people like some of the other ones in the series, but I tried to read the third one, The Lost Symbol, and... I think I made it like three chapters and just put it down and never read. They're really not well. He's not really a good writer. <laughs> you know, I hate to say it, but he really isn't. <coughs> and and he's he's mm -hmm. um, commercial. Okay. You know, and and not that that's a bad thing because he's obviously made millions and millions and millions of yeah. dollars with his books. Um, but I I like the angels and demons. I read The Da Vinci Code and like that, and actually did a mm -hmm. story for the leader on mm -hmm. it and interviewed a Catholic priest about it. Okay. And then um, I read the next Robert Langdon, mm -hmm. and I totally thought these are not that well done. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it can, I think it can be hard, too, when it comes to um, the authors, like when they start writing. You can always, for me, I can always tell when a series, when it becomes popular and when, a, when it kind of got picked up for, like, movies part way through <clears throat> like for me with the hunger games the first hunger games is really good the second one gets a little bit more and then the third one it was like she was just rushing through to try to finish it and that one to me read more like a script 
or like and it a, very well could have been uh, than it did it was the, adapted well and not only that but they adapted the third book which was like this big into two movies oh yeah there we go <laughs> Let's worship the almighty well, dollar. Well, Harry Potter did it first, so that made everybody else could follow it. I mean, we made three movies out of The Hobbit, and The Hobbit's this thick. Yeah, imagine so, that. Well, I never liked any of those movies. We're not, we're not going to talk. We're no. <laughs> we're not going there. We're never going to agree on The Hobbit and those books, Kay. I Just know. like you like your zombies, I like my Hobbits. My Tolkien's, yeah. and my Hobbits, and my elves. <laughs> the uh, book by The Eagle Has Landed is by Jack Higgins. Jack Higgins, okay. And and Jack Higgins did a lot of mm -hmm. spy thrillers and things, and they're all good. Mm -hmm. I like them a lot. I like them a lot. Yeah. <laughs> every, every now and again, I go back and read them. Yeah. It's fun to have books like that. I have re I have been, the, been re I rearranged all of my bookshelves in alphabetical order because I was like, oh, this will be fun. The ones I've read, I'm putting in alphabetical OCD, order. Right? Yes. <laughs> well, and I just had some that were like different authors that were all spaced around and I wanted all of the authors together. But my problem, I was telling my mom, I said, I have a problem now with this because I have one whole shelf that's just one author. And one of them is all still in a box. Like it's a box set. So they're sitting in their nice little container. And well, now I have books that need to go on the shelf above. And so I need to rotate. So then it's, do I move the whole set? Or do I take them out of the box and have it be split up? Oh, no, you can't take them out of the box <laughs> because it's a set. Well, I had one, I had one, I had the, the George R.R. R. Martin's uh, Song of Ice and Fire or the Game of Thrones series that were all in a box. But after you crack the spine and start reading those, they wouldn't go back in the box. Well, that was okay. <laughs> because they though. had expanded. Yeah, see, that's okay, though, because yeah. they didn't go back in the box. Yes. I have my Harry Potter books in a box. They came in a box. <laughs> Only they didn't have the seventh book in the box. Oh. So I have. Did you buy them before the seventh? Yeah, okay. I got the six in the box and the seventh <laughs> sits on top of it. And speaking of which, yeah. the State Theater is showing the Harry Potter yes. movies. Yeah, that's going to be fun. And uh, yeah, eight movies, yeah. right? Or nine? There's eight movies. Eight movies, because some of them, they split those books. Well, if you include the prequels that are out now with the Fantastic Beasts, then yeah. there's nine. Let's make another buck. <laughs> yeah. No, then there's ten, because there's two of those. Yeah, I, and I've but. never seen those. I sort of checked out after Harry. <laughs> I kind of, yeah. I like Harry Potter a lot, though, and I really, some of them I thought got very dark, though. Well, yeah, they get older, they get angsty. yeah. You know. And you know, and I was always disappointed with the last one when mm -hmm. when they attacked Hogwarts. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but still, I'm going to say mm -hmm. it. When they attacked Hogwarts, mm -hmm. that was like the best part of the book because oh, yeah. the whole the whole school mm -hmm. became Protects animated. It. Yep. And it's like they ran out of money in the movie, and they could only do like a few things, and yeah. it was so disappointing because <laughs> with the with the wonderful mm -hmm. things they can do with movies. Mm -hmm. Well, it always come back, comes back to it, Kay. The book is always going to be better. Always. I'm going to stay on my little soapbox here with that. Well, it's really true. Yeah. You know, I have to say it's, mm -hmm. I don't know that I've ever truly come across a book <laughs> that was worse than the movie. Every yeah. once in a while, people will weigh in mm -hmm. on that, you know, and they'll yeah. argue about mm -hmm. it pro and con online. And yeah, I'm trying to think it's another, um, I was thinking with Neil Gaiman, he's got a new, um, so he had a book series come out called The Sandman. There, it's like a, I don't remember if they were graphic novels or what they were, but Audible now, they're doing recordings of them. Is but this they're the one like, where the guy lived in the underworld and he came out and he killed the guy in the video store, cut off his head and he kept him in the closet? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Sandman. I don't know if it's the same one or not. It might not, not but... be. <laughs> <laughs> I read that one years ago, and it always struck with me because when the guy wanted to talk to the guy he stuck in the closet, he'd take out his head and talk to him, and then he'd put him back in the closet. Well, now we're gonna have now we have to look that up because everybody's gonna be wondering what the heck we're talking about. But anyway, what I was saying is, so when Neil Gaiman when he records audiobooks, he tends to do it. It tends to be more of like an audio drama. Okay. So like when with his and um, his book. Uh, Good Omens that was made into a show on Amazon. It's more 
of like an audio drama where they read through and it's like listening to um, a radio program. And so he's doing the same thing with uh, the Sand Sandman and it's got a pretty great cast. It's like James McElvoy um, is in it and one of the actresses from uh, Game of Thrones. It's like a star-studded cast. I'll have to look. We'll look it up and report back and we'll let you know about the series with the guy with his head in the closet, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you talk about that, I go to like, um, there's a musical called The Robber Bridegroom and that's the same thing. He's got a head in a box that he carries around and talks to. There's, it's almost like an Adams Family-esque thing. Oh, the books are the Sandman Slim books. Sandman Slim. There we have it, folks. And on that high note, we're going to leave you for the week. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Reach out to us on Facebook or send us an email at offtheshelfbooktalk at gmail.com. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>